That's empty Lito Galindo, by the way. Good old Rico Rico. Um, Mr. Shadler, would you please say the pledge? Yes. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and justice for all. Roll call. Ms. Susan Fobian? Present. Mr. Brad Beach? Present. Ms. Lourdes Vasquez? Present. I'm here. I'm here, so we have a quorum. Adoption of the agenda. Mr. Rikuma? I have a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 It passes 5-0. No comments. So, safe return to in person learning. I think you, uh, this is a requirement to order class item. I believe it's every six months. That was the timeline instead of going from Mr. Shadow. Thank you, Mr. Pugu. Good evening, members of the board. Mr. Um, Pugu was correct. This is a report we made to the governing board every six months. Uh, as my understanding, this will be the final report. Um, Three years ago, when Esther started, we were told every six months we have to put this plan before the public. So again, as a reminder to the, to the president, um, this portion of the agenda is open um, for public comment if anyone cared to read. I have very few changes. Um, I think everything has been very stable in our district as far as the um, our plan is concerned. So to scroll through, there's I will scroll through. You've seen this now literally for three years. This report, so I think it's page three, has the first red change. Is there a way to make that any longer? You can see so. He's working on that. I can just tell you the part in red that's highlighted at the top. Simply, a lot of the language I use is just updated each year. So it says in SY24, business learning will be, well, I'm sorry, let me, let me back up. Um, the first section talks about how the LEA will maintain the health and safety of students educators and other staff. So that's things about modifying facilities, hand washing, cleaning of facilities and, and screenings and so on. There were no changes to section one. So now I apologize, moving on to section two, which says how will the LEA ensure continuity of services? All I did here was update saying in SY24, distance learning will remain an option for all students in six through 12. We had it last year as well. We're just continuing with that um, with the majority of students attending in person. So the vast 99% of our students do attend in person, but so the board understands distance and the community understands distance learning is still an option. Um, and also meal services are normal during in-person school. And that, that, that's been continuing for a while. A little bit of the details, the academic need, again, under the heading of maintaining continuity of services, the only change or update here is that each school continues to staff at least one full-time counselor and one full-time community liaison to further assist students and families in meeting their students' academic needs. And a little further down, sites continue to explore and implement various forms of instructional time models. So again, emphasis on the word continue. We've been doing this since last year, so it's really not technically a change. It's more just an update. The next section down talks about continuity, maintaining continuity of services for social, emotional, and mental health needs. Again, <clears throat> through a various funding sources, additional counselors have been added such that each site has at least one full-time counselor. Um, and with that, those really are the only adjustments I've made to this report since I shared it with the board six months ago. So if anyone has any questions or Mr. President, for your discretion, if you'd like to open it to the community for comments. Is anybody here in the public, would they like to say anything with regard to that plan? Forever hold your peace. <laughs> Anybody? Uh, Phobia? I have no questions. Thank you. Vasquez? Um, my, my only question is do we still have uh, distance learning kids that are still distant learning? Very few. Uh, yeah, I know. Single, single digits. And, and they're and, yeah, very much personalized with a specific purpose for it. Um, just, just so that the board is aware, we do have students that have a hybrid type of schedule as well, where um, specific
um, where they may attend an internship or something, have a class online, then come to um, on you know on campus classes. So, um, but the, all of the students have at least four classes to meet that Thank requirement. You. Um, Thank you. Thank you for appreciate it, Mr. Beach. I have nothing. Thank you, Steve. Mr. Kramer. And when does this end, Steve? This uh, well, funding <laughs> funding <laughs> uh, this report. Um, this is intended for us to explain how we will maintain our content resources through September thirtieth, twenty twenty three. So, so this is our that's this month. This we're fine. We're submitting our final plan to the, to the state. Um, we'll continue with this plan for this school year, and then I think that's pretty much the end of this required plan. I'm just wondering, then we can give it its last rites and rest in peace, and hopefully we never bring this back. So that's the only thing I had questioned, and what we've got. Well, thank you, Mr. Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Well, I'd like to thank the administration for all that they did during that time. Uh, your team did a great job in sort of Google and leading us through there, and you adapted, as Mr. Hayes once said here, we were faced with adapting as one of our greatest challenges. I think Governor Ford did a good job too of adapting, and so did you, Mr. Duo. We had a lot of interesting, the least, conversations about it. And I think that's the toughest thing that this governing board, the members that are here that went through that, will ever go through, probably. I think it's safe to say that was one of the toughest times we didn't. And have a plan for it. So, your team did a great job of navigating through it. And I commend the governing board too for giving you the 5 0 vote to see us through it as you saw fit. I'd also like to commend Dr. Lunderville for all that she did. I know we've thanked you a lot of times, Dr. Lunder Lunderville, but gosh, and some of us may not have been here had it not been for your efforts to get the vaccine. Dr. Listen, you really took good care of the community. So I want to commend your team and the governing board for all that they did to see us through that really early time. And thank you, Mr. Shadler, for all you did as well and for just for giving us an update. Thank you. Superintendent report, Mr. Verdugo. I think it was really um, just a, a couple of uh, FYIs that uh, you have in your work package for board members. Uh, so I'll talk about it a little bit here. It's, um, I just want to make sure that you're aware that those are um, in your packet for your FYIs. Uh, um, I want to thank uh, those that were able to attend the ABA law conference. I think there's a lot of uh, interesting information. Um, some of the uh, you know, speakers you know, had a lot of very interesting uh, things to learn from them as well. So good conference as far as learning uh, some of the updates and things that we're going to have to implement as a school district. Uh, again, so again, thank you to the board members who were able to participate. I uh, want to thank Ms. Megan Padilla, who was uh, a presenter at the Practitioners of English Language Learners, um, and then also asked by ADE to come back and do presentations because of what we're doing with our fellow population. Um, so I want to thank her for that. Um, I want to congratulate football for their rivalry win for the second consecutive year. Uh, this year was very emphatic with 39 0, so congratulations to them. Uh, volleyball finished third at the Flying Wells uh, tournament in the gold bracket, which I think is probably the best that we've ever done in that tournament. So, congratulations to volleyball cross country, won the uh, Alice cross country on the boys' side, finished fourth on the girls' side. Uh, so, congratulations to them. ROTC finished fourth in the marksmanship. So, we got a lot of teams doing a lot of great things. Um, also wanted to thank Shannon for the, the newsletter that continues to, to improve and highlighting one of the things that uh, we are one of the first to do, which is have a middle school dance program. So I think it was really great to see the video and, and see all of the different things that our, our students are doing and see those happy faces. And uh, one of the things that I really enjoyed about writing the newsletter was why they like dance. It's uh, to build confidence, which I thought you know, for those young ladies was really positive, um, not just being able to perform, but, but building confidence and, 
and not being afraid to get out in front of people. So I think that was a, a great thing to, to hear from the young ladies. Um, with that, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. board member report, Ms. Fobian. Thank you. Um, the big win. I mean, that was that just has to be commented on over and over again. And really, congratulations to the football team for that great win. And, you know, I just have so appreciated all the social media stuff that keeps me in touch, you know, with our kids that are making commitments to colleges or, you know, the athletics, um, even the spotlight on the different sites of what the kids are busy doing and learning is just great. I appreciate it greatly. Thank you. Thank you. Vasquez. Same thing, everybody said congratulations to all of our athletes. Um, way to go, like she says, especially the, you know, the football game only because it was, it, it's been a very friendly rivalry. I'm gonna say that <laughs> with uh, now Gallus, and this is the second year that we've that we've gotten it, and I think the kids are more hyped than ever. Um, but anyway, but uh, everybody else, you know, the cross country, the volleyball, the everybody, all of the athletes, and you know, the kids that are doing the the dance program. I think that's great because it really brings a lot out from the kids, you know, with the the little girls and and, and all that stuff. So, uh, congratulations to everybody on that. Um, the conference was, uh, like Mr. Verdugo said, was very, very interesting, was very, very eye-opener with a lot of things. I got to be a delegate. That was like, okay, really <laughs> interesting, okay? Yeah. I had no idea what was going on, but, you know, it was, it, it lasted more than what I thought, but there was a lot of debate and a lot of stuff like that, so, but it was very, very educational, so I was really, really happy that I was there, so anyway, uh, thank you to everybody, and uh, Let's keep it up. Let's keep up the good work, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Beach. Yeah, kudos to all, all the sports, cross country, volleyball, uh, football. Mm -hmm. uh, we did win up uh, there. And I also want, I want to tell everybody that I did the 50-50 raffle. And my number came up, oh. so uh, <laughs> it was $200 richer leaving. In the <laughs> we were happy. Nice. That would have paid for that steak up in Phoenix. But, uh, oh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I was a happy camper. <laughs> now, if they can only beat uh, Walden Grove and uh, Sawadito, we're going to be kings of I-19. Mm. So, you know, hopefully, I don't know if we play them or not. We play Sawadito, not Walden Grove. Sure. Okay, so that'll sort of give bragging rights for I-19 corridor right there. Uh, the SBA conference, uh, some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I think Rebecca and I, we uh, attended the one on housing where on the Navajo reservation, they give housing to teachers and we went in all excited, you know, our heads were real big. Yeah, we're going to do it. We got property over here and uh, man, what's some nightmare stories. There were uh, mm -hmm. uh, apartments, they were raising rabbits in them and Two teachers, one house, domestic violence, what do you do? Dogs, you know, guns on, on the house. I mean, there was, they just threw all this stuff out and uh, we just went like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so I don't know, it doesn't look good. Yep, but uh, yeah. anywho, it was an excellent conference and uh, learned a lot over there. And, uh, that's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Yep. Beach. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kramer. Yeah, certainly. Congratulations. Thank you for tweeting that out the store. Certainly, that was certainly important, I, especially out here. I know down in that other area south of Ruby Road is probably very unhappy, but hey, two years in a row, that's kind of unheard of for down there, but that's great for our team, certainly, and all the sports teams. It's always good. Certainly, yes, the um, the conference was certainly good. I mean, it was certainly, uh, I'll give a shout out to those that uh we're still following the fact that uh, sometimes we want to follow the sense of integrity and mm -hmm. following civility and following policies and what we do is hiring practices. And we've stood our ground on that as a district for the last couple of years of how they've not been really good about that. So I'll give him whoever stood out and, you know, kind of spoke out against <laughs> why we didn't do things. I think those of us on the board know what I'm talking about, but certainly I think it's a very important that we do not lie on our applications. I'll just say it that way. So I think that's very important, especially in hiring, because that is a big cause. And I know that there was some discussion there for a little bit that I heard, but I think that's an important aspect. 
just keep our sense of uh, integrity intact. That's all I'll say on that. Um, I did as yes, I attended that one. I'll take it this way that I think the guidelines that the on the with the Native Americans are certainly have are a little more res restrictive. Right. Certainly, I think that it, it, I know we could certainly look at that. Not that I wasn't there with you guys and saying, yeah, that's crazy with rabbits and chickens <laughs> and, and everything to that effect. So that was yes, and the presentations were certainly that. I took out some of the slides that we all saw, but what talking about what school boards can do also, and some of the things that we certainly, and I won't bring all that because that's something that, that we will obviously look at a retreat. And it's certainly other things of what we should be doing. Uh, the social media addiction, and that's something that was brought up before. And I know that's something that we need to be looking at that because I will tell you this, that TikTok even uh, any of the other platforms, Facebook, everything to that effect. Now, Instagram, they, they will program to your likes and they will continue programming to your likes. And especially for our kids, and that presentation was interesting about the fact of that sometimes they're just their outlook and they'll go right to that and that's it. No, that's all they have in the day and they become very depressed if they don't have it. And it continues almost like an addiction. So I think that's something that we certainly want to look at. I know we're looking about cracking down on the phones and such. But that was one of the presentations. I thought it was good. Uh, the free speech is certainly important, but obviously that's always important that we talk about. There's the housing right there. Hey. Uh, also, uh, the library, I think as far as getting books and all that, I think we, I don't know if we've set up a review committee, but if we haven't, we need to do that because that is a requirement now. So we certainly have to start looking at it. If we already are, then that's good. But we certainly, it's a layer of insulation for us as a, Board, uh, the OCR, Office of Civil Rights Complaints, they've expanded it more. There's a lot more uh, leniency for those that are complaining. And certainly want, want to look at that. And they were talking about mainly around the 504s. And the 504s, not just for our district, but that goes out to whatever 504 students are eligible for. And if that entity is not providing that service, there's going to be a lot more pushback. And I hope that those students that are 504s, and they're not just with us, but all the other entities, are following that because that's very important. Because, you know, they always say we, it's sometimes a student like Mr. Stephen Hawking would have been declared a 504, but definitely it's not always about how you think or what you do and everything to that effect. Um, also, we have to put on our, start putting it on our boarded meetings about what time the public can actually come into the boardroom rather than just our start time. That's also what was said in a different couple of presentations. I'm just bringing that up. And we were, Jeep, I know you'd attended a lot of it with um, AI and where that's going. And I saw what, and all of us were of that. And I think that's certainly very important. But there was, a, and all in all, it was another, the law conference is a very good conference. I think it's very enlightening in more ways than one and certainly beneficial for all of us to attend. And then I think um, I look forward to see what transpires in the next six months with what we're doing and also what we're doing with uh, our board policies and as as opposed to what with ASBA. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. I'd also like to echo all the, the congrats from our football team. That was a, although it's not the ultimate goal, it was a great win for our community. The rivalry game and hats off to Coach Curran, keep it up, keep up the good work, and to the administration too, because it's a reflection of the administration's leadership as well. Uh, I had a great time at the law conference as well. I listened to these the key speakers, and I had a lot to I have some things to say about a report from uh, Dr. Pedro Noviera from USC. He talked about finding common ground uh, during these times and reaching out to each other, which is pretty hard right now, but considering all the vitriol and divisiveness. And he talked about not letting slogans get in the way of you doing the right thing in your district. And like he said, uh, some of these slogans just don't work, like leave no child behind. He talked about how we left child behind. Now, I'm not making a political statement. I'm just saying what he said. He mentioned uh, states taking over failing schools and how they failed anyway. He talked, his resolution 
for a lot of the problems today is to listen to each other, to find common ground, to fix things like we used to. And I had mentioned one time about how Noam Chomsky and Bill Buckley used to have debates, but in the end, they always shook hands and they found common ground. And it was interesting to listen to them. So I would again encourage anyone to listen to those debates. You can always hear them on YouTube. But that's what we need to do. And he also said that we have to cultivate teachers' talent by having our strongest teachers lead our other teachers into being successful as they, um, as uh, leading them to be, leading our, our other teachers into being successful, plus bringing in experts to help our students in subjects for which they are deficient. And those are the last, the last two things that I just mentioned right now were very insightful points and probably my biggest takeaway from that. He was a great speaker, really interesting and uh, very passionate speaker to say the least. So Chris Cotterman, well, he mentioned that we may use our county attorney for advice. Opinions. And I'm not sure exactly what he meant by that. He said that we could use our county attorney to get opinions. How we would go about that, I have no idea, Mr. Redugo, but he said that we could. So I thought, well, my gosh, maybe we would save a lot of money for doing that. He also mentioned state rulings on sports. And he said that we don't, that they're not necessary as we have AMA. He said a lot of these state rulings end up causing problems for districts because then when people challenge them, it's not the state that ends up paying the attorney's costs, it's the districts that pay the attorney's costs. So it's a real pain for all of us. So it's better that the state leave that kind of thing and commit sports into AIA's hands and AIA's hands so that we can avoid paying district fees and having confrontations with the public. I thought that was an important takeaway. And I listened to Michelle Borba the next day, Friday. She talked about, she mentioned some interesting statistics. 77% of parents concentrate mainly on their kids' deep uh, deficiencies instead of concentrating on their strengths. And um, she also talked about on a different subject, we should have our students write down on an index card who they would go to in the event of an emergency. Or they would go given a map of the school. And she said, uh, she said that this, this info could be very helpful in creating an emergency plan. So I thought that you and Dr. Lunderville and the rest of your team would find that interesting. Uh, although you were there, Mr. Rudugo, I, uh, Dr. Lunderville would find that interesting. Okay. She also talked about showing positive images of great things going on in the world and in schools, such as what the Coast Guards did uh, when they came to the aid of the millions of people who fled the devastation and slaughtering of 3,000 people. So those images were very powerful. And so they talked about how we could project positive images and how this has a great impact on the people and it could have a great impact on students. That was just an example that they gave, which made me think about the screens. And uh, chat GP, GPT was interesting. I said there with Mr. Kramer, and we, we heard really interesting commentary about chat GPT on the positive and negative side. I personally believe though that one of the things that really scared the bejesus out of me was thinking about chat or AI being in the hands of the wrong people. So he gave examples of how people can create bombs, you know, asking, AI to you know, the right ingredients at a local Walmart. <laughs> so that's kind of scary. Although I've heard some other things about how chat GPT can be an excellent tutor for the students. So there's a lot of positive with regard to artificial intelligence. But uh, just have to weigh things out and we pray to God that it doesn't have the hands of wrong people that's not used by the for the wrong purposes because it would be very dangerous and dangerous thing. It could possibly overwhelm us in the future. Let's hope it doesn't. Let's hope it's further positive. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much.
Oh, Rio Rico High School Assistant Principal. Uh, thank you. Um, as you know, that uh, we had Mr. Um, Mano who had uh, stepped down to take another position. Uh, so that left us with the void that we needed to um, And at Rio Rico High School, we had Ms. Claudia Delano, who was serving as the behavior specialist um, on the administrative team, um, as well as overseeing Sima Vista. So as we looked at who we currently had on staff, what we could fill in the role, um, and Ms. Lano has stepped up for us in a variety of roles. She was an assistant to the principal at Calabasas. She's been a counselor at Calabasas. She's uh, done uh, many different things within our district um, and has been really outstanding um, member of the admin team at River High School. Uh, so my recommendation is to move uh, Ms. Delano into the assistant principal position at River High School. I know you couldn't be here tonight because she was covering something at the high end. So, I don't know, Mr. Cohen, if you have any comments that you would like to yes, say. Yes, sir, I, I would. <laughs> uh, being a, operating any school is difficult. Operating a high school is you know, challenge, super challenging. And she has been clutch since I started on July 1st and before. I actually started and I support the decision to uh, promote her to uh, principal. Uh, she'll put the work in regards of her entitlements and uh, her 18 years in the district shows that. So I support it. I guess that's my point is I give, give a big glowing uh, thank you for Thank you. Any discussion, uh, Ms. Fogan? No discussion. Thank you. Vasquez. Uh, just that I think that that's a very, very good um, move. You know, that she would be, that she will be outstanding in any position that you give her. And uh, she goes above and beyond always, always. She's the first one here and she's probably the last one to leave. I mean, and she's everywhere all the time. She's just a, a go getter. I think she'll be amazing. So I support it 100%. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Beach, I have Kramer. No, it's too bad that she couldn't be here. It's, it would have been nice for her to get this recognition because it is a, a step up, certainly. And to be given that, you know, position to be here, it's too bad she couldn't have come. I thought means both of your assistant principals are covering out there. <laughs> so with that said, congratulations. I know we haven't voted, but hopefully she looks at this and says, good job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Uh, I echo the sentiments of my colleague here, my wonderful colleague, Ms. Vasquez. Well said, you did it well. So, on that note, do I hear a motion to approve Ms. Claudia Tolano as the new assistant principal of Rio Rico High School as presented? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And passes 5 0. Congrats. Congratulations. I think she has to come back though the next meeting. She still has to come up in front of them. <laughs> we can do that. Yes. Yeah. Okay, moving right along. District substitute pay rates, Mr. Google. I think uh, this was a request from the board to review uh, what our current sub rates are and if we would be able to adjust uh, to meet new districts or explore what neighboring districts would be able to better than Ms. Brown. Show the presentation and analysis that they did in regards to some of two rates, not only within our district, but uh, surrounding districts as well. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we put together a slide presentation to demonstrate our substitute rates. And um, there was a process that we had. Um, so when this came, came to us, we wanted to make sure we were thorough. So the first step we did, and I'll show you, uh, required and required to the districts. Um, substitute rates, we wanted to check both the daily and the long-term substitutes. So we, we have 14 different districts that you'll see. After we did that, we gathered reports from our ASOP, which is our frontline absence management, um, from both the 21-22 school year along with the 22-23 school year to find some trends. Um, and we wanted to be able to use our data to analyze um, to see if what we would find with any trends in cost associated to that. And then the final step is 
that Ms. Brown and I collaborated to analyze the contents of vacancies filled by ESI subs, which is we outsource with our substitutes versus the cost for subs filled by our teachers when there's a sub is not available and teachers do need to, to sub by a period or, or, or a class. Um, we wanted to make sure we could get that as well. So as you can see, there are uh, 14 different school districts. Um, we are only lower than four out of the 14 districts. You can see um, Red Rock Sierra Vista being the highest. Um, and then you can see where Florida Valley values. Um, currently, you can see that the daily sub remains at 147. Um, Long-term 168, and the teacher hourly is uh, currently is at 21. Um, we were trying to see where we could get in to be uh, competitive. Um, so you can see um, Novellus is higher than than we are at one uh, 61.88, uh, $200 for the long term, um, and then their teacher hourly is 23.75. Um, so we really wanted to be comparative. Um, go down somebody that's lower than we were, so we didn't want to really compare with that one. Um, and then kind of the ones, uh, Red Rock and Sierra Vista, they have their reasonings uh, based on location and other things and why they're so, so high. So um, we were, um, it was recommended that we would like to be, uh, for SUV to be at um, daily at $155 uh, long-term for daily, uh, long-term would be at $200 and a teacher hourly would be uh, set forth by $25 an hour, and that variance would be a more um, addition. Um, so you can see on the, the next slide, it is a, a bit um, small, but you have your, your copy there. Um, so what we really did is we checked every uh, site and we went through the results of the school year. 23 and 22 school year. And we wanted to really see what, what kind of trends are we finding? Um, so we really focused on last year because the year before there was a lot of um, COVID and things. So there was a, a lot of variances and we couldn't really find as many trends as what we would want with that coming from now. Thank goodness we could kind of try to find some trends. So we, we delved a little bit deeper in that. Um, you can see that while we do have um, so the absences, obviously, um, we really found a trend that second quarter seemed to be the highest absence rate. Um, so you can see in that absentee rule, absenteeism rule, um, rule of thumb of 1.5%. So in the red by every quarter and every school was at its highest um, with that. And so we went back to the lead and asked um, our principals why we kind of thought it was second, second quarter, um, the weather changes, there's more sickness, we noticed some different trends with that, just to see what we we could find. Um, you notice the last quarter, um, the lowest across the district. That one was uh, American DC because of shipping and everything else, and end of the year items that come to play with that. Um, that's kind of some of the items that we found, and then asking why we wanted to just see if there were any trends by quarter or by school site. And the last thing um, that, that we did, and I'm going to turn over to Ms. Uh, Brown, um, we wanted to see what were our substitute vacancies when we were able to um, fill an vacancy uh, in absence versus when we were not and we had to have our teachers coming in to stop. So um, you can see on the filled with, with subs uh, in the green. Of uh, vacancies filled with ESI, you can see uh, 22, 23 versus 21, 22, and we actually were a little bit higher, except for uh, quarter two in 20, uh, the school year 23, um, and so it was a difference of 577. And then without with the um, filled internally, um, we actually were uh, down this past year, with the um, exception of quarter four, which that went up quite a bit. Um, and so that's the negative journey. So I'm going to turn it up. Once we compiled, compiled this information, Ms. Brown and I got together and put money to those, those figures. And so she's the expert on that. And I'm going to turn that over to her. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board. Um, as Ms. Cabrera mentioned, after doing some analysis on how we're using, when we're using, when we're requesting subs. Um, then we come to the final step of the analysis, which was putting a cost 
to the, the recommendation to increase the rates. And if I may take you back to the, probably the second slide. So we have the rate level. Thank you. Um, so when this was presented, um, we were asked to break the rate of distributing time as much as possible. When we pulled the data, as Ms. Cabrera mentioned, of 14 years, we realized we're pretty much competitive um, with the exception of three districts. Um, so being that we're all in the, in the same community and fighting for the same um, resources, um, the recommendation was to try to match as much as possible the rate from Nogales. Um, and then uh, a recommendation came along to look at a different rate, and that's the one that you see highlighted in um, so those are the two numbers, and I'm going to go back to the slide that has the cost analysis. Okay. So the first um, number highlighted in, in yellow, the combined total of 71,366, assumes that this is going to be the only um, I have right now no indicators that anything is going to change in that area. Um, so with that assumption, I was able to calculate that if we were to match the rate in Nogales, we would increase our cost in this area by 71,366. Um, then the second um, combined total that you see on the bottom of the slide is if we were to use the rates that were um, brought to our attention that were highlighted in the previous slide in lavender or in light pink. So, and that combined total puts us at a increase of 49,400. So that's, that's the recommendation that we have. Um, any questions? What is our current quota that we spend on substitution? I think that is a relevant number that I think is So the internet, we earmarked more than $300,000 to cover the cost of subs. I was moving us to three hundred and seventy two or three hundred and fifty. that this is not for the budget has already been proposed and adopted, right? So if the, the board decides to move forward with any of that increase in the rates, we would be pulling for contingency at this point to accommodate the request. You guys have supported if you have any questions, you have to answer questions as well as I mean, I'm I'm thrilled with this well done analysis. This is really informative, and you know, we have if we have the finances to raise the sub pay, that's awesome. I remember back in the days when it was cut because we just didn't do it. So this is this is good, and I appreciate your work on. And also, I do want to get one clarification. One of the things that, that is fine, I believe, to um, adjust the uh, long term sub rate is because of that it is comes from future through rates and savings. So, it really doesn't have been done. So, I would for a normal teacher. So, that $200, um, you'll see that in 70000 plus 50000 because it's already uh, the savings either way. Yeah, and it's a savings that it. It's in a case by case basis, right? Um, we don't know how much the teacher that left was earning. Maybe Ms. Brown was making 50000 but then we have a Ms. Cabrera that left and she was making 48000 So that savings is different. It's going to be different every time we use a long term sub. So, so it's hard to come with a telling you how much more it's going to cost. Than, knows who they're going to be replacing and what the cost of that person was and what was the funding source of that FTE because that also comes into play. Um, so the analysis today is solely on daily subs. It does not take into account long-term subs um, because I think we're doing 
we use the vacancy statements and pay for them when we close that. And that is something that's less than the future. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing, when you do, if I may add, when you do an analysis on compensation, there's certainly a piece of that. Um, you always want to think, what, what am I trying to accomplish when I modified the, the rate, either an hourly rate or a salary or sub rate? What, what's my goal behind the, the modification that I'm recommending? What am I trying to accomplish? Right. Ms. Vasquez? Okay, just a question. Okay, so then this means that any teacher that is going to be subbing for another teacher for one period, it's going to move from 21 to 25? That's what it means? Or the 2375. Okay, so it actually, okay, so then we're looking at the 2375 and the 25, right? So in other words, right now, the teachers get 21? At this point, okay, okay, I, I wasn't sure because I thought I knew it was fifteen or something like that for for about eight. You know, uh, I think that might be a classified person. Uh, if it's a classified sub, that's at the rate of whatever that position is. So you around the fourteen or fifteen dollars an hour. Um, twenty one dollars an hour uh, is for the. Like your example, the teacher subbing for another classroom is 21, and then the proposed is either 23.75 or 25. dollars Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. I understand it now. I just kind of like, okay, wait a minute, because I remember, you know, it's been a while now, but I remember that the last time I had to sub for somebody was about 15 something or something. Something to that effect, because it's been a long time. But anyway, <laughs> okay. Now, this is really well, um, I, it's very self-explanatory up to a certain point, okay? I just wasn't sure which one it was. But yeah, thank you very much for this. I really, I, I really, I really understand it. So, and the more the teachers, our teachers can get, I think the better. This thank you, Ms. Vasquez. Mr. Beach? Uh, yeah, I think subs are really hard to find. And I think we got to remain competitive on the pay scale. So I like the presentation. I like the numbers. The only thing that uh, sort of scared me was we say we're going to be dipping into a contingency fund and we have a budget. And, and once we go outside that budget, we start using the contingency fund. So I don't know if you can elaborate. Uh, should we worry about that? Or is it, uh, is this going to be the norm or, you know, And I know we'll discuss enrollment in a future um, for many a study session. But um, as you're having dialogues of possibly tapping into contingency, keep in mind that we are currently in a school year where we experience a significant drop in enrollment. Okay. So that comes with a and it is my obligation to share that with you. Um, as a standalone item, $71,000 or $49,000, it's no big deal. When you add it to um, addressing the decrease in enrollment, if we don't make up those numbers, then it's a different conversation. This is a two-year question. If you know my, my tenure, we're, we're very restrictive on going outside of our budget. So, yeah. so to your question, um, this is not the norm. Always looking to make sure that we stay within recommendations to, to stay fiscally responsible, but also we know there are times when we need to expand and, and try to do things because we need to. And, and I think that's the, the conversation we're having here is, is you know, does this really need to happen? Um, and I think you know, either way, we're, we're in good shape. And one one last question. I know uh, we do have long term subs and uh, subs that are coming in every day. Uh, you say we do save money, but what happens when we hire teachers and we have to pay a teacher forty five fifty two thousand? We're still hitting that contingency fund. It it can happen. Yeah, absolutely. It can happen when you hire a long term person for a teacher, and then here your let's say your capture of savings. But then HR will continue to look for a certified person um, that's, you know, we want the best 
for classrooms. So they'll continue to actively recruit to replace that long-term sub. And if that happens and they find this really good candidate that's gonna make more than the person that left, now we're at the opposite. No, we're at the All of those scenarios are can happen. Can happen. All right, thank and you. That's what contingencies are. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Beach. Mr. Kramer. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for the fine presentation and the breakdown of all the other districts. And certainly you're looking in, into doing your research, which is always important, especially for financial, uh, what we're going about, embarking upon here. I certainly thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Verdugo, for bringing this forward. This is one thing that I had requested, certainly. It started out with the 21 to 25 because I thought our full-time certified teachers deserved every little four dollars they can get. That was one. Second of all, I know that you budget for the FTEs. It's in our budget that we approve upon. If there's 10 positions that are not filled, whatever budget you put at that of 50,000, we also got to figure in you also budgeted in benefits, which our subs are not getting benefits. So there's another percentage of money that's not being covered in. Is that correct, or is that forty six thousand also benefits? Let me let me let me add to that, Mr. Kramer. Um, subs that come through ESI, the only um, benefit that they do not get is the the retirement. So they don't con contribute towards retirement, right? Because they're hired through a third party. Agency. We're using ESI for our subs for daily subs, yes, and our long term our subs, long -term. yes, absolutely. They have been outsourced for a number of years in our district now. So when we increase the compensation for the subs, along comes an increase in the fee that ESI captures. This ESI captures 8%, charges a percentage of, of the contract that they have. Or the so every day a sub, if I come in for two days a week, I got insurance for two days? Well, if you hit a certain threshold because the law changed, What's so the threshold? I'm say it drops significantly. Um, it drops significantly, Mr. Kramer, and I'll have to follow up because that's more on the benefits um, side of our, of our house here at the district office, but I'll definitely research. But it is significantly less than what it used to be in the past, where I think now it's like 10 hours or something like that, and they're eligible to receive some kind of insurance. We can offer them insurance. So, At cost to them or no cost to them? No, they would incur a cost. The The key is to offer them. When in the past, they wouldn't even have to offer them insurance. Right, right. we didn't pay, right, they didn't have And then they earn leave. There was also something, a change in the law um, that passed four years ago, where um, also that was, those were earning leave, a leave plan, and um, access to health care, health insurance. You had to be at a certain threshold. And that was significantly reduced um, some years ago. So it's, keep in mind that it's not, um, that they don't receive any benefits. Well, it's, yeah, okay. That's, that's, the thing is the, the, the FTE then, I guess that's what you, you alluded to, but what was that funding of what we, and we don't have 10 positions. I don't know how many subs we have right now, how many long-term subs we have either. So that's, that's another intangible of what the cost and overall picture of this is. Because it's it's if we're looking at every dollar, then I guess we'd have to see every dollar to make a wise choice. That's something that I don't know what the what that funding is, or what how much money that is, or how much money we're saving. Granted, that's something that you know obviously we want to get the best. We get what we get what we pay for. I mean that's certainly with subs too, and every principal wants that best sub. And those of us that were principals and those of you that are principals, you know darn well who your good subs are and who your subs are. Well, I'm just using it for now. But you want that person because you're also concerned about your academic performance, especially when we've had subs for a whole year at elementary levels, which is not sometimes good for our students. And then that's why I think the just the other how really is what they do so um we are exploring uh, moving away from the inside the conversation we have this year um 
to do because the fees can continue to increase. And it's something that, again, we're always trying to be fiscally responsible. Um, but obviously, we currently can't do that. So it'll be a conversation we'll have to look in here um, to make a determination at the end of the year. Yeah, I think that's important too because a lot of the subs sometimes are retirees that probably already have some sort of, and they're doing this. And the and times to say, hey, we can pay you another whatever we look at rather than get rid of the ESI and the insurance. And they'll say, I'll take that extra 30 bucks a day or whatever it is. I don't need the insurance if it's incentive to get that best sub. And that was my whole point of this was to one, treat our teachers that are certified teachers well enough to at least give them $25 an hour and they're pinch hitting. And two is to get the best subs because you hit it right there. We are fighting for just a certain pool of subs because they're not coming from Tucson to sub. I don't think so. I'd be surprised. No, they're Maybe not. Green Valley. But then again, we're fighting for that small pool of subs. So the, the best deals that we can get obviously are financially. And thank you for bringing that up about the insurance because that's certainly something, something that we look into for next year. But that's what I had to say, certainly because that's why I wanted to do this because I thought it was important again. And Susan, you said right in the beginning is we need to pay our teachers whatever we can. If it means digging into a contingency fund and we have it to do that, then so be it. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Well, Regarding what Mr. Beach asked, and tapping into this contingency fund, I know that it's not law, as you've explained to me since I was first on the governing board to have a rainy day fund of 4%, but do we still shoot for that? We currently have more than 4%. We do have more than 4%, um, and it, that has to do with the funds that we were able to accumulate as a result of the ESSER funding. Um, that we received, so we were able to capture that saving and carry it forward. Um, this year, we um, were able to, that saving that had accumulated, we were able to use it to bring back some of the expenditures that we transferred to ESSER. Um, but then ESSER, the first ESSER, now it's, it's, yeah, it's no longer with us. We sunset that grant, so we were able to now bring back some of those expenditures into our operating funds. So we're starting to use that, that accumulation of funds that we were able to build as a result of the one-time funding from COVID. Um, so to answer your question, we currently have more than 4%. And we are scheduled to absorb more of those expenditures that are currently housed in the final phase of ESSER funding, as Mr. Chandler mentioned earlier with his presentation, which is in this fiscal year. Okay. The other thing that I wanna come back to is what you had mentioned is, what is our motive for doing this? I mean, when we're looking at the numbers and we still see that we're filling our subs, I have to ask myself, why are we doing this if we're still getting the same same thing or we're still getting the same amount of subs and we're not losing anybody for this? So I can't help but asking that. And with regard to that, <clears throat> I would like to hear, since you mentioned that we have choices here, okay, so we could go with a 155 daily, but... Uh, with the regard to the $25 T hourly, why can't we go to $23.75? We can. It is up to, it's up to the board. Uh, to, and I, what I would recommend is that we go uh, in three different motions. This is this is still a compromise. We're still giving them more, but we are even with our competitors to the south, our biggest district to the south. And so I would recommend that it, it, um, or makes a, a recommendation or motion that it, it would be a recommendation motion for um, long term at two hundred dollars. Make that motion and then vote on it, and then motion for the uh, teacher hourly sub rate as a separate motion, and then the um, daily rate as a, a third motion. Just so uh, clarification, so that there's no confusion with uh, the office and the people. So we can. I would like to hear from my colleagues what they think about. $23.75 rate. Ms. Fogan? I have no argument against it. Okay. I, I kind of just worry about all the input, the whole, all the data that they gathered to come up with the 25, but I really have no argument against it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Ms. Vasquez? Mm, I do. I think that the, all teachers should get the 25. I really do. I think that we give up. Um, 
as teachers, we give up our planning period. We give up, you know, that time that we have to do grades, to do parent conferences or, you know, whatever, we're teachers with, with the students and whatever. And that's hard. And because then you have to redo your schedule because you never know when you're going to have to sub for somebody. And there's times when you sub every single thing. Okay. <laughs> it's, still single. Hmm? it's still a raise. It's still a raise, but I think that the 25 should be better. That's for me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Thank you. Did you yeah, looking at uh, what other professionals uh, make hourly, 25s, you know, I'd go higher, but uh, 25 is good. Mr. Kramer? Well, we're kind of polling here, so I think I'm going to go on what I stand for with Lourdes, and that's what I brought up originally, was, I mean, you guys took this a step, thank you ladies for doing it again, you took a step forward. My, my, when I first brought that up was, Hey, they're paying a quick trip twenty two fifty, and Lewis, you hit it right there. The colleagues, the teachers, twenty five is just a. I mean, that's you know, you just said maybe if it could be more, there'd be more. It is true. You're giving up a lot, and those of the teachers that come in and you say, "Hey, can you come and do this again? Again? I was gonna, you know." And then you, okay, I'll do it for the team. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll stay. I'll step up for the. And twenty five dollars after taxes? Come on, really? Whatever. Twenty three. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty two or whatever it is. You come up with negative ten. Exactly. <laughs> yes, but the point being is, it's a raise of some substantial amount to provide for our certified teachers who are already working for us. That's my stance on that, and I think it is if we can always give more to our staff that are working for us. Not that the subs aren't. And the subs do a great job of that. But <laughs> my whole point again was to track the best, but also reward those that are stepping in, stepping in. to a climate that sometimes they're going, what? You, you always find out your, what your other teachers are doing when you sell. And what, and, they're not doing. And, uh, and what they're not doing as well either. But that's a different story. That's a different story. But that's my stance on that, Mr. Ramirez. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Kramer, I wasn't trying to poll anybody. I just wanted to, I was interested. I went to a discussion on the subject, especially since I'll be blue that I won't go back to having a discussion during my meeting. <laughs> At any rate, I think that we could make one motion that to, I mean, I'd like to make a motion then that we move the rate, the daily rate to 155 and the long term to 200. And the teacher, the hourly rate to 25 then we'll move. Second. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please With say discussion, aye. Discussion, sir. Oh, yes, okay. All right, Mr. Kramer. Yes. I knew it was going to come, so yes. Any well, also, I try to make sure we follow the <laughs> protocol here. Anyway, the point being is, as a recommendation was, it could be three. You combined all three. I think you guys have what you just heard from all of us, especially in some of our from Will the former teachers, this what Ms. Volvian said, I think it's a very good thing and what we're doing here. And yes, we're going into contingency, but again, it's worth it. That's my stance on the final say on that. Thank you. Well, as a teacher, as a fellow teacher, I, I would agree with you. I'd concur. So seems like we're unified here and I'm happy to see that. So I have a motion, a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation, Thank ladies. You. Thank you, Vivi. Yoki. Administrator Performance Pay Rubric. Her Thank you. Um, you know, we had this uh, conversation all the way back to the spring of the presentation of how we can support that. And one group that doesn't receive 301 are uh, administrators. And for this is an opportunity for us to be coming together with what the form of pay for and the team. Uh, and the amount of 2,500, but we also didn't want it to be uh, just a We wanted to, to make sure that we follow similar to 301, that there are responsibilities uh, that they must follow. So I'd like to invite Ms. Reda to assist with this and put together the, the rubric uh, that the supervisor will use. Uh, to determine if the administrator met the requirement for that performance. Thank you. 
Thank you. Good evening again. Um, so with the administrator performance pay, um, we did create a menu and a rubric. Um, and we also went ahead and took it a step further and we created a annual goal for the performance pay, just like um, teachers have their annual goals and, and what are the goals, what are their steps to achieve it, what are the activities that they're going to use and what's their plan of action. So that looks very similar to the um, teacher annual data and teaching goal. And we wanted to kind of mimic that because when you have a plan and goals in place, it seems to work a little bit better. So as you can see, um, there are four, uh, the rubric goes into um, points and it's either one, two, three, or four. Um, there are different areas that you're able to um, be part of. Um, so for example, if you wanted to get one point, you would be able to represent the district in a, a local leadership station, such as Rotary or the United Way. Um, you would also be able to represent the district via leadership role. Um, you would just have a, a leadership role in Rotary, United Way, government relations, et cetera. There can be others than just those. We were just trying to give samples. Um, or if you would, uh, had recognition from an outside local organization that reflects positively on the professional work of the individual or the department um, directly supervised by the in, in, uh, individual. So it would be recognized by um, an organization, for example, 10 years of partnership, and it gives that positive recognition to to um, the individual or to the department. If you were to move into a level two, so you have to have a total of four points and there's different ways to get gather them. Um, you would be able to represent the district in a statewide leadership or service organization, such as ASA, ASBA, First Things First, um, AZ Alice, Latinx, the Fat Four Corners, et cetera. Um, or you would be um, you could choose as well to facilitate a district-wide committee or task force that produces a product to, um, to the benefit of the district. Um, 301 committees task force, um, a 301 design team, 301 class participation in an advanced level four calendar committee, things that we're really trying to move the district forward and, and we're, uh, the administrator would be part of that. Um, you could choose for level three. Um, representation of district programs at a meeting of statewide leaders and or state conferences. Uh, once again, ASA, ADE, A for Arizona, Center for the Future of Arizona, et cetera. Or that that four, do one thing and, and get your four, the possibility of your four points. Um, that would be representation of district programs at a meeting of national leaders, um, such as NWEA, national conferences, et cetera, that you would participate in, or recognition from an outside state organization. That reflects positively on the professional work or department. Um, ASA Administrator of the Year is an example, Government Financial Officers Association, A plus School of Excellence, um, AHG Medal Recognition, ADE School Letter Rating of a B or higher, et cetera. So the administrator with the evaluator um, would be able to work through what they wanted. So they could pick, you know, two points um, in the one level and then one of the two that would get their four points. And that's then they would have conversations um, during their, their quarterly meetings or their, their periodic reviews, the nature of that. And they would be able to go back and look and see what their goals are. How are they going? Are they working? Where are you in this process? And then at the end of the year, it would be finalized. And that would determine whether or not they, they receive their, their money. So that. And just to, to clarify, though, the board has already approved that uh, we would have um, performance pay. It's just now that we are now uh, adding the rubric of, of how it would be earned. So I wanted to thank the board already for their approving of the performance pay. It's just we wanted to bring something back because, again, we wanted to, to make sure that it was something that, uh, just like the teachers, just like myself, um, that has my annual presentation, that there is something that uh, they're required to do to earn that $2,500. I think it looks well thought out and I, I think it's very realistic and it's always nice to have real true objectives to follow. Ms. Vasquez? Um, yeah, I totally agree with her. Also, you know, one of the sad parts that I think is that I think it's sad that we cannot just give the our, our you know, our principals that money because they do so much already that they would have to do something more to get it. And that, but I feel that way about teachers too. Like with the 301, I think, you know, why do we have to continue to do stuff? But that was just me, okay? Right. But anyway, I think, you know, it's, it's very well put. It's very, you know, very self-explanatory. It's very easy to, you know, to see. And again, you know, this, uh, the principals and 
uh, they're, they're going to be able to choose, pick and choose whatever it is that they want so that they can get their money. You see, I would give it to you like that, guys. Okay. But anyway, I can't do that. But but anyway, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Beach? Yeah, do they have to get the four points to receive it? It's all or none? Is that how it works? That would be a conversation um, with their administrator. So yeah, we haven't discussed any um, arranged amounts for like we got three. Mm -hmm. um, we'll probably discuss bring back some. Yeah. That's, that's my only wondering because, you know, they are busy, sometimes family emergencies, they might accomplish two, and I think they should be compensated for even one if they accomplish one, so maybe a future agenda item or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. That's all I have. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you, Mr. Beach. Mr. Kramer? Yes, I was concur with Mr. Beach on that as far as we give uh, 301 goals to teachers, correct? It's not all or none? Yeah. Is it? It's kind of prorated. It is, it is prorated. Right. right. Depending on the level of accomplishment. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it is prorated. Yes. Excuse me. Thank you. I'm just throw it out there. <laughs> okay. That's what I do at times. I throw questions even though I know the answer. Oh. Uh, right. I think you just alluded to that. I think out of fairness to our administrators, mm -hmm. that yes, if they do hit half of it, that if they get two points, why not 1250? Yeah, I would, I would say that it would be 25% per point. Exactly. Or something. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. And the only other one I would say is I don't think, because um, do we give our teachers then in lieu of 301 goals if that school gets an A plus school of excellence? Is that their whole goal then? They made it as A plus. They don't have to do any other 301s? No. no. All right. So I wouldn't put in A plus school of excellence for the administrators if the teachers don't get it. I think what's fair is fair in an equitable sense. Mm -hmm. I think that because the teachers are doing the most of the work at the school to get that school to the A-plus school of excellence. Although the application is, is more, is the administrator and a, a team that would do it. And, right. I, and I'm assuming that, that the application for could be part of a 301. Yes, I, I can help Mr. Shadow speak. That's similar to a task force. I'm not I'm sure I entirely understand the question, but in terms of the application for A, plus, it's typically done um, when it needs to be called a cycle, which is no longer a part of the 301. So the, the application is done by this team, by this fat by the team during their early release days. I agree. You know, I agree. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying the boatload of work is the team and or the teachers that are doing that. What I'm saying is do teachers then get that same uh they don't have to do the 301 because i'm on that team is that my whole 301 goal that would be part of their 301 but i mean is that my whole goal? because for the principals it's four that's their whole goal so are the teachers getting that same thing if, if you're asking if a teacher if the teacher who works at an a plus school is then excused from the 301 yes yeah, so and getting the same thing as a principal as an a plus school of excellence it's four points is twenty five hundred dollars Right? That's what's on yeah, but, but I think you're missing, I'm sorry if I can speak, I'm sorry. No, I, I think that you're misunderstanding okay. because this is what, what, what the principal is going to be doing as, as the way I understand it. He's the one that's going to be running the whole show of doing the application for an A plus. Well, I've got, I don't understand the process of his yeah. administrator. I'm saying that the principal does, yes, but he's not doing, he or she is not doing all the work because you have a team. Teachers as a team are all doing it together. For those that have been with A plus School of Excellence, those that have got North Central or whatever the accreditation process is, those that are getting whatever, it is a team of a group, not just one individual. So that's what I'm saying is that team, then if those teachers are on that team, are they getting the same goal for 301 as this administrator is getting? I'm trying to make it equitable for that team. I understand. Yeah, I understand, but it's, it's, it's never going to be one of these that not going to be equitable because teachers receive a significantly amount of more of dollars than administrators do for this. Um, and this year it's close to twelve thousand dollars, and way more, almost nine thousand is is in their base pay. So, so it's so it's and so what we're trying to do with this. Well, is, then they should get some a portion of 
as amount to, equivalent to what the prince was getting. That's my whole thing about equity. If you guys don't agree with that, that's just my thoughts. Mm -hmm. I'm just putting it up there. It doesn't make it right or wrong. Thank you. I mean, it's an opinion. I'm just throwing out my opinion because that's what I think, again, about being equitable for the teachers. So with that said, I know you spent time on this, and certainly it's only 20 if we said only $2,500, it is $2,500. I don't have a problem. Thank you, Mr. Clinton, President. You're welcome. Any further discussion by any board member? I have none. So, do I hear a motion to approve the administrator performance pay rubric as presented? I'll move. Second. Second. Yes. Yes. Just when you said as presented, does that include the 25%? Uh, an amendment? Yes. That to be an amendment. We already made a motion. Yeah, so we just need uh, to die for the motion. Yeah. Do you have a second motion? Any further discussion then? I think you could do a friendly amendment where you just add in 25% per, per level. And uh, just go ahead and make that motion. It's, it's, called, it's called a friendly amendment. Yeah. We we just can't do it as as presented right. because yeah. the twenty five percent wasn't in right. there. Right. So so let the motion just down. withdraw your motion, mm -hmm. and then somebody can do a new motion that includes with the twenty five percent. I said let it die without a motion. Okay. Well, does anybody want to? Okay, so you call to them. withdraw the motion that we just made. Okay, so let it die, and then it can remotion. Right here. And then you okay, stand. So I move to uh, I make a motion to approve. You've got a motion on the table still. Yeah. He, it, he called for a vote, so you can just call for the vote and let it die. All right. Okay, but I also made another motion to withdraw that motion. Uh -huh. I don't think anyone seconded right. that motion that's from the first time. It's another way. Did you get a motion and a second? Okay. So, all in favor? Please say aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The motion dies. There you go. Okay. Now. So I make a motion to approve the performance pay rubric as presented with the addition of 25% uh, added to each step. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please have. Do we have any, any further discussion, Mr. Kramer? <laughs> you did it, that's why you let it go. Thank you for the what you did. And certainly I think the steps are one, two, three, and four, correct? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion by any board member? All in favor, please say aye. 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 One thing passes by zero. Thank you. Move right along. SCVUSD policies, Mr. Rizbubo. Uh, thank you. Uh, for the previous board uh, meeting, we had all the legislative updates that are required uh, to add to our policies and Many of you saw a lot of that discussion during the SB conference. Um, so tonight, the recommendation is to approve, and we reviewed all those as a, as a team. Um, so the vote is to uh, update the SB 31 policies as recommended. So we don't have any further ones besides this. No, not, to, not tonight, and then we'll review those uh, additional ones um, for more discussion next meeting, including the uh, Dress code as well as cell phones will be on our agenda. On behalf of the governing board, I'd like to thank you for that. Thank you. So I'd like to mo make a motion to update the SCBUSD number 35 policies below as recommended by the district administration. So moved. Second. A second. Any discussion? Dang, we went right from action to instruction information, right? To... Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yes, I do. Um, certainly, hopefully, the principals understand about the Suspension policy, and I know that we've never brought that up, but we certainly should bring that up. But at times, I know that it have been in the past, not under your administration, but hopefully that nine or 10 day suspension stays intact because there is no appeal for suspensions. 
Hopefully that continues. I know I'm not saying that anybody has in the past, your administration, but I know that has been brought up before because there were appeals and there were everything to that effect. So hopefully we we go to, we cover that. But I guess I will, I'll wait on anything else because we've already passed the discussion. So we're, we're going to discuss it then later after we already approve the this stuff. Yes, we we can because we, we can always, again always we, we can always change it. Yes, because that's a living breathing dog. Yes. All right, for the sake of time, then I won't bring anything else. Any other discussion? Any board members? I have none. I have none. Spoken. Thank you. Or do I? So all in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes five to zero. Okay, propose and prioritize topics and possible dates uh, for future board meetings. Does any governing board member have anything that they would like to propose for a future board meeting? Spoken. I have nothing at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nothing at this time either. Thank you. I have nothing. I certainly do because I think the superintendent knows because I told him I was going to bring these up. So, plans for enrollment. I certainly want to bring that up. I think we discussed that at the conference, but you know what I'm referring to on that. So we don't have to get into in depth. And the fact that our CFO said it was down, that concerns me. So definitely that is in hold and true what we were talking about. Uh, certainly we've talked about this before, but I think it's necessary now, especially if we want to continue improving our district. I know that Dr. Lunderville's had so much on her plate, she doesn't even have room for scraps at times, to even push away, but we need to look at our TSW program and get that going, because it's very important, especially for our 504 students. If that's going to happen, we should be looking at that. Not that we aren't. Also, the ARS, this was brought up at the conference, ARS, 15-341-839. And we can take a look at that, I guess, later. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome. Let's do what we're going to bring up. Uh, we might just send out information for us with regard to uh, the yeah. 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 So, um, uh, to cancel uh, the governing board meeting schedule on October 10th. Um, the request um, might be because we want to have a study session during the month of October. And also, the October 10th is during fall break. And I went back with um, the various Mr. B's with fall break. Um, I'm only during that time. And so, uh, to honor that time off, um, asking that the board uh, move to cancel our. October 10th meeting. So and with regard, regard, then I will bring up the space mission after that. So leave that motion first. Okay. All right. So do I hear a motion to cancel the governing board meeting scheduled on October 10th, 2023, due to fall break? So move. Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? None. Any? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes 5 0. Uh, and then the, the second uh, recommendation is to have the board retreat on October 21st from 9 a.m. to noon. And with that, I will be sending out um, an email to the board members asking for specific topics. So, for instance, the first topic we already know is going to be enrollment plans. Um, so, We'll, we'll do it during that study session. Um, so if there's any additional items that the board would like to have more in-depth discussion on, whether it be policies or any of those type of things, we can do it um, during that study session because again, it is more of an opportunity for public discussion. Um, and then we can provide resources, whether it be bringing in an attorney or any of those type of things for additional training if needed, um, and, and any requests that the board have. So I will be sending out um, an email requesting uh, for the board for topics that they would like to have on that study session. Um, my recommendation is October 21st, but again, we wanted to give options. So, uh, the second option is October 21st. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any discussion, Ms. Fogan? Uh, uh, no. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion, Ms. Fogan? I agree with Mr. Verdua. I think the 21st would be better, but that's me. And um, I. that's it. I have nothing else. Speech? I agree. Sounds good. 21st. Kramer? Good for me. I won't be the 28th. So that's good. <laughs> so, I hear a motion to schedule the governing board retreat for October 21st of 2023. 
So moved. Nine a.m. to twelve p.m. So moved. Yes. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? No. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes five zero. And then again, I will be sending out an email. Uh, I'll give you a Okay. Yeah. Session. I had a question about the review. Is that's the dress code and discipline mark? Are we going to have this information with regard to that? Yes, I will be sending out. Uh, we will send out a current policy uh, for you to review. Uh, and so that we can edit, right? Yes, I'll be sending it out. I'll be asking to send that out uh, to you this week. So that's that if we wish to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for us uh, to discuss at the next board meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Rubin. I appreciate that very much. All right. So, consent agenda. Uh, do I have, is there any governing board member that would like to remove something from the consent agenda? That's it. I do, Mr. President. I have number 15. Hogan? I have nothing to remove. Thank you. Oscars? Me. I have nothing to read. Uh -huh. I have nothing. Yeah. Read? I have nothing. Okay. And I have nothing. So, do I hear a motion to pass the consent agenda with exception of item 15? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes 5 0. Mr. Kramer. Thank you. Yes. Welcome. I Vasquez just said I beat her to the punch, but I think that we we're probably thinking of the same oh, line. Same thing. I saw that yesterday when I did this, and I said, you know, for something like this, and if that's the value of it, it behooves us not to bring this out in the open and to actually bring more attention. If uh, Miss Matilda Walters would love to have her come to our board meeting to be recognized, because we used to do things like this in the past. <laughs> I think we need to start bringing this back because it's certainly the value of that is tremendous amount. And it's certainly not that every donation isn't welcomed, but this is certainly a, a grand donation that we, I think we as a board should probably be recognizing this more. It's an estate, but even if it's the estate, much like our former superintendent that donated that 131,000, I think we should do something then, at least to the family that did that, to be recognized. I will let Mr. Fanning know. We can get a family member here to something. Like that's that's my just again. Yeah. That's my opinion. I'm not. I'm just throwing it mm -hmm. off there. That's what I wanted to bring up as a that. Thank you, Mr. President. You're very welcome, mm -hmm. sir. Any further discussion, Ms. Uh, no, just that it was. It's a. Amazing, uh, amazing gift. It's very, very something that you know that it is not not everybody would give something like that, especially you know, you know to a school and stuff. And I think it's it's amazing. I didn't know it was from an estate either, so you know that kind of like breaks my heart. But thank you to Ms. Walters uh, to her family for donating it to our school. I think our kids are more than lucky because of stuff like this that people do in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I have nothing. And I'd just like to thank Mr. Kramer for bringing that out and uh, so I do a lot of it. So, so I'm going to pass number 15 on the consent agenda. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Kramer. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes 5 0. And as we have no further business to discuss, this meeting is adjourned at 625. Thank you. Thank you.